Hey, Science Maximites. Today, we're doing the egg drop experiment and oh! Oh, no. Oh, no. Ha, 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 Things like this egg carton are designed to cushion the eggs in case it accidentally gets dropped or in case you want to stack something on top of it. The egg drop experiment is a great way to design some really cool stuff, and it's easy to understand. You take an egg and you drop it. <gasps> oh, oh! <laughs> so, let's get designing our egg drop experiment. First, you're gonna need an egg. <gasps> no! <Why? laughs> ah! Everything's fine. One, two. Right, so where were we? Ah, oh, yes, you need an egg. And you need an adult's permission just in case you make a mess. Now, there are two ways to approach the egg drop strategy. You can cushion the blow, or you can slow the descent. And there's tons of ways to do either of those things. Cushioning the blow, pretty easy. You get a whole bunch of soft stuff that the egg can fall into, so it doesn't break when it hits the ground. Or slowing the descent, you do something like this parachute idea, and it slows the egg as it falls, so it doesn't hit the ground with as much force. Ah, and you see, the egg is totally fine because it went slowly to the ground. Now, this episode isn't just about dropping eggs. It is about material science. The kind of materials that you use make a big difference. Styrofoam, tissue paper, very light plastic, very light string. If we were to say, use different materials for our parachute version, say wood instead of styrofoam and heavy string and very heavy fabric, I wonder if this would work as well. No, it doesn't. So there you go, Science Maximites. Ugh. Materials make a difference. Make a balloon-powered boat. All you need for that is something to be your boat and a balloon. Then you attach them together. Actually, the best way to do it is use a straw and attach the balloon to the straw using an elastic band. And then you attach it to your boat using more elastic bands, just like this. I put a nice tape top on the boat to make it look awesome. And I also put a little bit of a riser here using just anything plastic to keep the straw nice and straight because the question is, will our balloon powered boat work better if it's pushing in the air or if it's pushing in the water? Well, let's do a science experiment and find out. First version in the air. <laughs> Oh, almost all the way. Now let's try it with the straw like this so it pushes into the water. Whoa, it works so much better. Why? Because water is denser than air. The air coming out of the straw has to push against something to make the boat move. Water has more mass than air, so pushing against water has a better result. Now, let's max it out. This is an air compressor. Well, actually, that is the air compressor. You see, the engine here pushes air into this tank, which works sort of like the balloon. And then it goes out this long hose, which sort of works like a straw. So let's make a maxed out air powered boat. Ready? Just like the small boat, pushing against the air doesn't produce much thrust. Huh, not so great. But now let's put it in the water. Pushing against the water gives me much more thrust because water is more dense than air. <laughs> Maxed out air powered boat! Maxed out air powered boat! Yeah! Whoa. That's, that's not me. Did you know that we live on the bottom of an ocean of air? It's called the atmosphere. And compared to the Earth, it's really thin. I mean, it's about as thin as this. Huh? Huh, look at that, not very thick at all. But it's a good thing the atmosphere is around and not just for breathing. Though I am a fan of breathing. What do we want? Breathing! When do we want it? all the time. But did you know the atmosphere has different layers? It's true. I will walk you through them. 
No, I mean, come on, you gotta, you gotta come with me. I'm walking over to walk you through them. Okay, the troposphere. This is the layer where we are all existing right now, where all of our weather happens. There's a lot of air molecules in this layer. Think, think of these balloons as air molecules. There's a lot of air in this layer. <laughs> Yay, air! Next layer, the stratosphere. There's less air molecules in this layer, and it's where jets fly. Next layer, the mesosphere. There's even fewer air molecules in here, and it's where meteors burn up and turn into shooting stars. Fire, 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 fire! Whoa. The thermosphere. Not many air molecules left up here, and this is where the northern lights, the auroras, happen. Woo! Northern lights! And finally, the exosphere. This is as high as the atmosphere goes. This is where satellites orbit, and if you see any air molecules up here, they're just passing through. Hello. And after that, nothing but the vacuum of space. Ooh, the vacuum of space. Of course, you know it's not that kind of vacuum, right? Right, vacuum just means no air. There you go, the atmosphere. The only thing separating us from the vacuum of space! <laughs> Roberta, your space vacuum got broken. I don't know how. <laughs> Cynthia and I are maxing out the nucleation fountain. Whoa. This one is almost like a spray. It's not like a mist. Yeah, it's a, a mist, mist of cola. Just to experiment, we tried using a giant bottle and pouring the Diet Cola in. I'm a little concerned about the science, but it didn't work. Well, that's not very exciting. Okay, so that didn't work at all. No. This is not a chemical reaction. It's a physical change. So it's the carbonation that matters. Exactly. When we poured the cola into the bottle, we lost almost all the carbonation. How are we gonna max it out? That's the question. So if we can't make a larger container... More bottles? We just have more bottles. So we'll exactly. just get a lot of them and we'll set them off in a sequence or something. Okay, let's do a pattern or something. We'll uh, max out the I know fountain. Should, you know, we should be sort of like a cascade and we'll get a, ooh, a lazy Susan or... or... Cynthia and I have done a whole bunch of different experiments. Experiments. To find out how to max out the nucleation fountain. So we'll just get a lot of them and we'll set them off in a sequence or something. Okay, let's do a pattern or something. Now we have a bunch of bottles and we're ready to try the maxed out version. We've got our, our release mechanism. With our medium aperture. Yep, and uh, we're gonna put the mints in all of the bottles and then we're gonna release them in a very coordinated... Pattern. Re rehearsed pattern. Very rehearsed. We've rehearsed it a couple times. We'll see how it goes. And we've got this lazy Susan, which will spin around, and we'll see how it goes. And three. Two, one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. seven. <laughs> 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 Surprise. One, two. Oh. Go, 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 go. Three, four. <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> Whoa! It's raining giant science cola. <laughs> we maxed it out! Maxed out! <laughs> Nucleation fountain. That is as good as it's gonna get. So let's recap. Our nucleation fountain is all about releasing the carbonation in our Diet Cola faster than normal. This happens because there's lots of tiny bumps on the mints for the carbon dioxide to grab onto and make bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> High fives. Woo! There you go. Science Max, experiments at large, nucleation fountain. Excellent job. Now all we need to do is, is clean it clean up. Clean up, and I think I need a shower with water. Yeah, I think I need at least the towel. Yeah, okay, it's supposed to volumize your hair. Is it good for I your hair? So. I yeah, hope so. Yeah, better than honey and things like that. I don't... <laughs> awesome! You guys gotta try this, it's so good! Whoa. Carbonated chili! 
Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> Please, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it.